So uh, my question is that, why do you choose Terawada instead of the others? Very good uh, question. My dad is actually into Tibetan Buddhism. So I was, yeah. uh, I took my refuge under Tibetan Buddhism first. Uh, but uh, yeah, just in the early days in Singapore, the uh, lamas that gave talks, uh, they usually need translators. Yeah, so they, they sort of don't speak proper English in those days. So they need a translator. So uh, those days probably we weren't that patient. <laughs> so my dad signed me up for uh, this uh, meditation class from this uh, Sri Lankan tradition, uh, this Amataga basis tradition. So I got to learn this course and I was uh, sort of enjoying myself in the course. So I was sort of followed the, the, that style. And uh, in between, I was more active in my student uh, Buddhist uh, organization. So we sort of volunteer you know, and help out the Mahayana organizations. And uh, yeah, so I got exposed to like you no know, different traditions and yeah, but I still stick to uh, Theravada, something more uh, comfortable. Mm. So it is a matter of comfortable and yeah. also uh, like uh, closer to your, to the uh, understanding, right? But yeah, uh, I suppose it's karma. <laughs> karma, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Are you uh, actually have certain uh, inclination towards the uh, Bodhisattva path, or you already decided from the beginning, I want to become, uh, you know, th this path, you know, or not that path? Something like yeah. that kind of question. Very interesting because Bodhisattva has uh, different definitions. Uh, in uh, uh, Theravada, there's also Bodhisattva that aspire for Arhanship or Bodhisattva that aspire for this uh, Pacheka Buddha. So it's a very different definition. So basically all of us can be Bodhisattvas. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right then. Okay, one. Okay, no problem. Ah, yes, in me, yeah. So then the next question is within the Theravada, because you mm -hmm. mentioned you actually were uh, in touch with the Sri Lankan lineage, and then yeah. there's Myanmar and there's Thai, and what makes you eventually become a Thai forest tradition monk? Yeah, actually it's more of a rush. <laughs> I wanted to follow this uh, Bante Mahinda, uh, the, the one in Malaysia. Uh, I went to his uh, retreat at uh, Alokarama and... Uh, I followed him to Australia, right? So I was staying and uh, that time I just finished my national service and uh, two years of uh, army, yeah? And uh, we are required to like, you know, sort of uh, go back like maybe every year, like for 10 cycles, sort of uh, train. And uh, you know, these are the, the 10 cycles are the one that activated to go for war and whatever reasons. So these are the time when people grow fat and have a family and have a good career. <laughs> But so, but anyway, um, yeah, so during those, uh, the retreat times, I was uh, sort of hurrying to get ordained so that I can sort of, uh, uh, no, don't have to go through the hustle of uh, registering to this uh, uh, reservist, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, no, Bande Mahinda was also talking about administrative issues, about visas, and, uh, you know, he's also a missionary monk. And those days I was very naive. I thought uh, I follow him means must stay with him only. If, if that's the case. Yeah? But then he's traveling around and nobody guide me. And he was saying, if you want to ordain, maybe I send you to a, a Sri Lanka, like a school, you know, like a proper monastery where they teach you everything. So at that time I was so, so naive. I was thinking, okay, uh, no, just uh, learn meditation. We'll do why, why learn all the scholarly stuff, right? So then, uh, you know, when I came back to Singapore, then I have a friend who was a uh, volunteer at this Palelai temple. So he introduced me to Palelai. And then from there, then I, yeah, they linked me to Ajahn King. Then that's how I got all day. Okay, all right. Yeah, so now it's uh, 8.32. We let Terence uh, do the introduction.
It's okay, all too, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to MSPS Weekly Meditation by Prago. Today is the 2nd of February, 2021. Skip the etiquette. MSBS is very fortunate to have with us Ante Adibalo, popularly known as Prago. But he was born on July 14, 1985, and he had his big, big coordination in 2008 after his NS. <laughs> Mate is currently the Vice President of Wat Palilai Buddhist Temple, Singapore. Today's guided meditation is based on the Mahan Satipatthana Sutra. Mate will be leading the homage to the Buddha and thinking of the five precepts for Buddhists. Now let's compose our minds and put our palms together and welcome Mate. Over to you, Mate. Okay, all right. Thank you, Terence, for the intro. Now we shall begin with the opening chants. Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Satma Sambhutatsa Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Satma Sambhutatsa Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Satma Sambhutatsa <coughs> Free Refuges Bhutam Saranam Gachami Tammam Saranam Gachami Sankham Saranam Gachami Dutiyanti Bhutam Saranam Gachami Dutiyanti Tamman Saranam Gachami Dutiyanti Sankham Saranam Gachami Tatiyanti Bhutam Saranam Gachami Tatiyanti Tamman Saranam Gachami Tatiyanti Sankham Saranam Gachami Five precepts <clears throat> Panati Pata Viramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Adinadana Viramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Kami Sumichachara Viramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Musawada Viramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Sura Mirakya Madha Padmadatana Viramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Hey, so uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, today we shall carry on uh, the second month of this uh, Mahasatipatthana uh, Sutta. Uh, so we have covered all the way to uh, mindfulness of states of mind. So we shall move on to this, uh, the hindrance. <coughs> Right, so there, uh, this fourth quality, this uh, mindfulness of mental qualities or mindfulness of Dhamma or mindfulness of phenomena, depending on uh, who's the translator. Uh, so there are five things, five aspects. So the first one, five hindrances, uh, we've covered already. Second, uh, five aggregates. Third, six uh, sense media. Four, uh, five factors of awakening and uh, five, uh, Four Noble Truths. Okay, and the next one. So we talk about the five hindrances. Uh, there are total five. We talk about sensual desire, that's one. Uh, I didn't manage to type the rest. Uh, oh yeah, it's at the bottom. Ill will, sloth, drowsiness, restlessness, uh, and anxiety, and uncertainty. So total, uh, there are five of them. All right, so uh, in the last year's retreat, we've talked about uh, some of the temporary kind of solutions right, to you know, overcome these uh, 
stuff because the long-term solution only an anagami or an arahan you know, anagami can overcome this uh, greed and hatred you know, sensual desire and ill will and anagami is a third stage of enlightenment <laughs> so it's a very advanced uh, stage so it, it is to say that it is very normal that we will have this sensual desire and ill will any practitioner beginners or veteran uh, meditators will experience this sensual desire it will be greed and hatred definitely have so that's why it's uh, called dhamma it's a natural kind of phenomenon right and uh, <clears throat> sloth and drowsiness plus restlessness and anxiety somehow it's uh, it can be overcome if a person is an arahan <laughs> if a person is uh, fully enlightened then the mind uh, has overcome restlessness and anxiety. So that is the uh, uh, one of the 10 factors they have to overcome. And uh, lastly, uncertainty, right? So uncertainty is only, how do you say, probably a sotapana, a stream enterer, to have overcome this doubt in the Dhamma. So these are the hindrances. And uh, the short term solution for uh, ill will will be loving kindness. Uh, sensual desire, we, what we do is asupa meditation or impermanence. And this uh, sloth and drowsiness, there's actually a whole list of solutions, right? In this uh, Chapala uh, Sutta, where this uh, story of Venerable Mahamogalana was uh, nodding, falling asleep before he got enlightened, right? So he was meditating and about to fall asleep, his head is nodding, and uh, Buddha uh, walked past and gave him some advice how to overcome this sloth and drowsiness. So, ranging from uh, investigating the Dhamma, we'll talk about that later. So, it's part of the seven factors of enlightenment. It will create this enthusiasm and energy. So, if you uh, investigate correctly, it should lead to more energy. Uh, so some people say, oh, meditation will help you to fall asleep. Uh, not true. Or meditation will uh, lower your blood pressure or lower your heart rate or whatever it is, depending on what you're doing. Right? So if a person is falling asleep in meditation, you close your eyes or sleeping, their heart rate will go down. <laughs> right? Definitely it will go down. But are they doing it correctly? Right? So on the other hand, if a person were to investigate the Dharma, you know, eyes closed, contemplate on impermanence, and try to find the uh, answers, right? They, are, they get enthusiasm, you know, they get more energy, more excited. So they have this uh, joy and exhilaration. So you, your, this uh, heart rate will definitely increase, right? So it's, that's why the external measurement uh, cannot be used to determine uh, how well a person meditates. Uh, so again, uh, after this uh, investigation of Dharma doesn't work, then the next down the line, there's a whole few list of them. So things like uh, having a, a mental debate on the Dhamma, you can uh, discuss, have any doubts in the Dhamma, you can trash it through, have a mental Dhamma discussion in your mind. If that doesn't work, you still fall asleep. And then you can, uh, uh, for Venerable Mahamogalana, uh, the Buddha advice, uh, you can visualize white light, white light kasina. So this will uh, brighten up, this, uh, stimulate the senses and make him awake. So if still, that still doesn't work, then uh, things like recitation of chants, you know, memorize chanting, you can recite them, or things like pulling your ears and you know, washing your face, you know, gazing at the sky, or walking meditation. If that still doesn't work, then uh, say, lie down mindfully. Lie down in the lion's posture. So that is the... Uh, advice from uh, the Buddha on sloth and drowsiness. Right, so this uh, whole range of solutions. Okay, so, um, and restlessness and anxiety, uh, the way to overcome it is equanimity. Equanimity. So uh, we, last year we discussed you know, several methods. Uh, one of the methods is directly contemplating on karma. So if a person will talk about, okay, I'm the owner of my karma, heir to my karma, whatever, good and bad, right? It's the resultant of whatever I've done. 
then uh, yeah, so the person would accept all the uh, sensations and all the worries they have. They slowly let go and they slowly achieve a peace of mind. So this is uh, one method. And uh, there are many other methods. If a person were to enter its uh, concentration, enter the jhanas, they can also uh, reduce this restlessness and anxiety. If a person has a vipassana kind of samadhi, that would be better. And uh, last one, uncertainty, right? So the short term uh, solution work to, you know, if you just ask a question, <laughs> ask a question, then your answer will be clear. So that is the theoretical, you know, at least a theoretical kind of uncertainty. But if you were to practice this uh, very well, so there are these four points in this PowerPoint slide. So one, two, three, four, talks about the four right efforts. You have to overcome these uh, five hindrances. So it's not about uh, no, watching, observing with the ill will, or observing the sensual desire, just observing, observing. So it's not good enough. You need to uh, abandon. You, know, you need to know how it's abandoned. So you need to put in effort to abandon it. So this one requires some proactiveness. Okay, next. Okay, so if a person were to apply this proactive approach, so um, then a person can observe the arising and passing away of these five hindrances. If you have, let's say, sloth and torpor, you stay in and you fall asleep, then you cannot observe any <laughs> arising and passing away. You're just unconscious. Right? So you need to put in the uh, effort to overcome these uh, hindrances. All right? So it can be both internally or externally. Right? Um, so it can be, you know, uh, let's say greed or aversion within this body or within the mind or externally, you know, can be outside of the body. Anything that is uh, pleasant looking or unpleasant looking, then you develop these uh, hindrances. All right. And uh, yeah, so the whole idea is to um, maintain this detachment or, or the objective is to uh, have detachment to the senses, to uh, no, anything in the world. Okay, next. Okay, so now we talk about the five aggregates. So there are uh, five things. You can see in the diagram, uh, you can start from the bottom of the diagram, form, feeling, perception, mental formation, and consciousness. So these are the five aggregates. Right? So the whole idea is to uh, observe its origination and disappearance. So this is a person, how they discern these uh, five aggregates. Okay, next. Okay, so to further elaborate what is the five aggregates, let's go back to the previous slide. Okay, so um, let's say for those who are still new, okay, there are five aspects of experience. When you perceive something, right? This, let's say if you look at the screen here, you see the you know, five stones. So this is a form. So this mindfulness externally. So how about mindful internally? Let's say yourself or your own uh, body. So that is a kind of form. So this is the first uh, aggregate. It's made of the four elements, earth, fire, wind, water elements, which we covered uh, much earlier in the first lesson. Uh, the uh, four elements, right? So form is constituted of the earth, fire, wind, water elements. And uh, next, Aggregate is feeling. So wherever your attention is placed, there will be this thing called feeling. So when you perceive anything pleasant, then you have pleasant feeling, then you have unpleasant feeling, and you also have neutral feeling, depending on what you are in contact with. Okay, then uh, it is followed by perception. There's the third aggregate. So when you perceive something, some people translate it as memory. Memory. So whatever uh, jargons or terms you've learned before in the past, whatever experience you've learned before in the past, and you take note of a sense contact. So there's perception. So if you look at the screen, or why you can read the words? Because you already learned the words before. So there's a kind of perception. So even if this non-verbal uh, 
or it can be experiential. You touch something, you taste something, or you, you know something that you cannot verbalize. So that is also a kind of perception you perceive. And when you pay attention to something, there's this thing called mental formation. The moment the thought is being formed, it is being fabricated. Right? So that is the uh, mental formation. Um, in the previous series, we talked about karma. So why, why your attention you know, wants to, or why your thoughts are formed in this manner because of karma? Why do you have certain train of thoughts? Why are they like this? Why are they thinking maybe in a positive manner? Or why are they thinking in a negative manner? So these mental formations, right? The moment they are being formed. It's conditioned by past, usually habitual kind of karmas. Uh, so that would be if let's say you are relaxed and you do nothing. So whatever thoughts that's being uh, sprung up in your mind, so that is uh, past karma. These are mental formations of the past. They are ripening up. So if you deliberately, you know, uh, think of something, so that is creating new karmas. Okay, and the uh, last aggregate is consciousness. So consciousness is basically our awareness. So we can be aware from our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. So these are the uh, six classifications of consciousness. Right, so these are the five aggregates. So when we perceive something, let's say we look at a screen, we are using the eye consciousness. If you're hearing what I'm saying now, you're using your ear consciousness. So as long as we are aware, so that is the consciousness. Okay, so there are these five things. So there are five in one. Okay, next. <clears throat> so in this way, he remains focused internally and uh, on mental qualities in and of themselves, externally on mental qualities in and of themselves, or both internally and externally on the mental qualities in and of themselves. So some people say, oh, the mind, uh, everything is within. <laughs> right? and, and all the things we perceive in the world is within, happening within. Right? So, but here he mentions externally. <laughs> so it can be external. So there are uh, those uh, new age uh, movements that talk about the mind that is uh, uh, bigger than the body. The body is within the mind. <laughs> so there are different uh, kind of perceptions. So anyway, uh, we just know there's internally and externally. So uh, you know, objectively or em empirically, you know, when we uh, look at the screen, it is outside. We can even extend our arm and touch the screen. It's outside, right? So there's something outside, there's something inside. So uh, wherever our attention lands, so that is your five aggregates. Okay, so, uh, or he remains focused on the phenomenon of origination with regard to mental qualities, on the phenomenon of passing away with regard to mental qualities, or on the phenomenon of origination and passing away with regard to mental qualities. So like mentioned in the previous slide, you have to observe the uh, origination and disappearance of the five aggregates. And uh, lastly, right, if you're unable to observe this uh, arising and disappearance, then at least try to be patient, you know, just take note, where is your attention now? Right, so, uh, so what we can do is a short experiment. We can uh, lift our finger, I think most of you have done it before, <laughs> and point, you no, know, where is your attention now? What are you paying attention to? Is it forever up there? Yeah, is your attention forever up there? So you have to um, basically catch where is your attention now, every moment. So this is the uh, whole idea. So if you cannot even uh, observe, you know, where is this uh, running around with the mind, then it's a bit hard to practice this one. Yeah, so uh, this one, uh, <clears throat> interestingly, uh, if we move back to the uh, Chitta Nusati, right, this mindfulness of states of mind, this mind is also made out of five aggregates. So if a mind is focused, restricted mind, 
there is also five end gates. If the mind is uh, you know, slightly more expanded, you think of the whole body, also five aggregates is part of the five aggregates. You know, there's feelings, there's, uh, you know, there's form, you can feel the four elements, the sensations, you perceive something, and you can even extend it wider, scattered mind. So let's say the mind's relaxed, doing nothing, let the mind run around here and there. So that is also, uh, there's also five aggregates. And if we do, let's say, loving kindness, deliberately expand the mind in a very large area, uh, that is also the five aggregates, right? So the whole idea is whatever mode your mind is in, uh, you can observe these uh, five aggregates. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we can move on to the next slide. Okay, so these uh, six-fold internal and external sense media, right? They are this, uh, the case where he discerns the eye, right? The forms, he discerns the fetter that arises dependent on both. Okay, so there's the eye, and the form is actually the, uh, let's say the screen you're looking at. So there's the image, the form, right? And he discerns the fetter that arises dependent on both. So the fetter means uh, things that tie, yeah? So there's a connection between the two. He discerns how there is arising of an unreasoned fetter. And he discerns how there is the abandoning of a fetter once it has arisen. And he discerns how there is no future arising of a fetter that has been abandoned. Right? Okay, so the fetter, uh, no, in Buddhism, we talk about the 10 fetters. So the fetter could be, again, greed or hatred. So these are the fetters. So when you see something, yeah, you know there's a screen, but then what kind of feelings arise? And from the feelings, what kind of craving arise? So that craving will form the fetter, you know, either greed, hatred, or delusion. So these are the fetters. So a person has to you know, it's not just seeing for the sake of seeing, or hearing for the sake of hearing. So you need to discern uh, these fetters. Right. Okay, next. So again, there is an objective, right? If meditation is just about you no know, seeing, hearing, spelling, tasting, touching, then there's no different from any ordinary person. Any non-meditator also can see. <laughs> they also can hear, right? They can go for eyesight tests. You no, know, I'm mindful of <laughs> looking at all the alphabets and the numbers on the screen. So uh, uh, to practice no, meditation on the sixth sense media, a person have to observe this uh, uh, arising and disappearing of the fetters. Okay, so in this way, same thing, uh, focus internally uh, on these uh, qualities in themselves, externally, and this uh, phenomenon of uh, arising and passing away, the second paragraph and the third, is if you really cannot observe arising and passing away which is uh, a bit uh, quite impossible. Uh, your attention move around, you should know, right? So if let's say your attention doesn't move around, uh, you're stuck there, you know, there's lots of sloth and torpor, just be patient, uh, try to you know, use the uh, techniques to investigate, you know, trying to uh, steer your way out, all right? <clears throat> and the next slide. Okay, so I won't talk about this, it's a, uh, another chapter altogether. So I'll just cover on the five aggregates and the six sense uh, basis. So this is for the theoretical sharing for today. And I open the floor for discussion. Any questions on the ground? on the comments, on the chat. Nothing. All understood. <laughs>
uh, been re uh, repeating you know, the same points you know, from the previous few uh, topics. So the Dhamma is uh, very repetitive, emphasizing on the same points uh, over and over again. Okay, and uh, if there's no questions, and all are so enthusiastic, then we can have uh, a short break. You know, you can do your uh, stretching, and we come back about. Oh, it's still early, yeah. No, it's still <laughs> eight fifty-eight. We nine o five. At nine o five, come back and we can start the guided meditation. Okay, so uh, see you all later.
for uh, people with streaming. Make sure you find a comfortable uh, seat. Okay, so uh, everything is here. Minus nine oh five. Yeah, yeah. So an upright posture. Make, make sure it's upright. Body is relaxed. And once you have adjusted, then we can start on with the first phase of uh, meditation. We are doing the uh, body sweeping again, visualization of the body. So we are going to first uh, visualize the hairs, all the hairs of the head and the body. They be well and happy. When we close our eyes and have this image of the hairs, we are actually using the mind door. Have an idea, no stand body and mind. So really using the mind. So if you do not uh, focus uh, carefully or stay with your objective, it is very easy to drift off. Yeah, because it's. Uh, already watching a mini movie theater in your mind thinking of the body so somebody was mentioning they drift off so if you are not uh, clear with your objectives you know, to uh, practice detachment of the body and so you think of the hair and you think of oh which salon to go to how to beautify my hair and there are lots and lots of stories So you stay with the right thought, right? reach all the hairs well and happy. Every time your mind moves to a new segment, new patch of hairs, you wish them well and happy. Even if you are done and while waiting for my next instruction, you can do the other way around from the toes all the way up to your head. By all the hairs, wish them well and happy. So the whole idea of the meditation is to deliberately uh, generate right of right effort to not let the mind idle. Once the mind idles, then all the hindrances will come. It's uh, soft and proper, restlessness, worry. Okay, then all these hairs have to go through this birth, aging, sickness, and passing away. The hairs get oily, dirty, sweaty, and they grow long. And turn white. 
sometimes they crack or split and they fall off every day there's lots of hair is falling off their hair is growing their hair is growing and falling so that is uh, one kind of arising and passing away Another way to observe arising and passing away is every time there's a new image, new form, and there's a new thought, right? So new mind door, new five heavy bits. New formation. And then we can ask ourselves, are these hairs truly self? Can we tell the hairs not to go through birth and death? And the next part of the body, we are going to visualize the nails or the fingernails, may they be well and happy, and all the toenails, may they be well and happy. All these nails are subject to birth and death. And they grow long, get dirty, and they go through wear and tear. All these scratches, cracks, and they even chip off. Every time you scratch on something hard, the nails, the cells, they fall off. The nails constantly grow and they fall off, grow and fall off, wear and tear. And we can ask ourselves are these nails truly self? Tell the nails not to go through this birth and death. Next part of the body is the teeth. I'm going to wish all the teeth well and happy. So all the upper rows of teeth, may they be well and happy. And all the lower rows of teeth, may they be well and happy. Image of the teeth is uh, perception. Mindful of your feelings, and then you find your teeth pleasant or unpleasant. That's when the wish them well and happy. Yeah?
and all these teeth are subject to birth and death. So uh, they change in shape and size. And they get dirty or the luck builder and yellow and some brown and they decay and black and they grow cavities and grow holes. Get loose and shaky. Eventually, they fall off. And we can ask ourselves are these teeth truly self? Can we tell the teeth not to go through this birth and death? And the next part of the body, we are going to visualize the skin. So the skin that surround the whole body from here, they be well and happy. And all this skin are subject to birth and death. So we get uh, dirty, oily, sweaty. And wrinkle, odor. Sometimes you have all these skin problems, uh, cracks, rashes. And spread, itchiness, uh, boils, pimples, and so on. And eventually the skin they fall off. Lots of dead skin falling off every day. Think of the skin growing and falling, growing and falling. And we can ask ourselves, are their skin truly self? We tell the skin not to go through this birth and death. And we're going to move on 
to the uh, next phase of meditation, we're going to feel the breath below the nostril, above the upper lip. Now we're restricting the mind one small area. But this time around, we can no need to visualize that. So we're feeling the uh, <coughs> body sense door. So basically the skin, the sense of touch with the air. One confined area below the nose, above the upper lip. Uh, no need to uh, feel the rest of the body. Right? No need to feel the diaphragm, your lungs, and your windpipe. You can basically ignore as much as possible by right? the contact of the seat to the ground, any sort of body aches or pains, you can ignore them by all means. By just restricting the one small area below the nose, above the upper lip, and uh, no controlling of the breathing, gentle attention. So whenever there's an inhalation, we wish the breath well, and whenever there's an exhalation, we wish the breath happy. So inhale, exhale, uh, normal reflex action. So the only value-added thing we Add in is the uh, thoughts of loving kindness. We need to produce the right thought for every breath. Yeah? Make friends with every breath. No need to struggle or fight or coerce the breath or the mind. So when the air touches the skin of your lips, right? Um, what kind of fetters arise? Are they greed or hatred? So the way to sort of overcome this uh, fetter is by using right thoughts. First, uh, reduce aversion, uh, loving kindness. Inhale well, exhale happy. There's more detachment. Mind will uh, settle. So whatever nice sensation, whatever peaceful sensation you experience, I just take note, but do not cling. So how to not cling? You stay with the right thought. Every time you generate the right thought, that will uh, cut down the clinging. Once you are at peace with the breath, 
then we can introduce the truth. You know? So basically, we're just observing the origination and passing away of this uh, one small area in the breath. So this breath uh, consists of the five aggregates. So you don't have to observe all five at one go. You observe one at a time. So first, you observe the form. So the form constitutes of the four elements, earth, fire, wind, and water. So earth element represents any hard and soft sensations. So you breathe in and out. If there's any change in density, then there is a rising and passing away of the earth element. And the fire element represents hot and cold. So if you breathe in and out, any change in temperature, then that is the rising and passing away of the fire element. And the wind, fast and slow movements, you breathe in and out, any change in the breathing rate, then there's the uh, rising and passing away of the wind element. And water is the moisture. Moist and dry. So if you breathe in and out, any changes in uh, this humidity, then there's uh, rising and passing away of the water element. So there's no need to purposely uh, generate these sensations. Whatever you observe uh, that appears right now. That is your uh, own evidence, your uh, own uh, observation. You can see the mind, true nature of the mind, see things as they really are. Yeah? So if the four elements are too slow, the rate of change is too slow, then you can combine with the second aggregate, feelings. So every element, uh, you know, there's feeling, either you find it pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. And inhale and exhale, all kinds of sensations, all kinds of feelings. Observe the arising and passing away of the sensations and feelings.
and the rate of change is still uh, too slow uh, for you, then you can add on the third aggregate of perception. Basically, perception is the naming or the recognition. Call this earth element or fire element, or call it fast or slow, right? Whatever you call it, that is perception. The naming, yeah? And observe any changes in perception. Already have form feeling perception. Yeah, three. Whole idea is not to over intellectualize, uh, stay with the uh, solid evidence that you have. And whatever change, then you just uh, take note. The whole idea of this exercise, the objective is to reduce clinging. So the more you observe impermanence, the more detachment you should have. The mind should get more and more uh, peaceful. mind gets more and more peaceful or whatever pleasant sensation you experience uh, do not cling onto it right so the way again to overcome this clinging is to keep on generating uh, these thoughts of taking note of this arising and passing away When you observe this arising and passing away, that arising is called mental formation. The moment the thought is being formed, and there's a new sensation, how is it formed? Yeah, so there is mental formation, that is actually the fourth aggregate. Every sensation is a new formation.
being aggregated is basically your awareness. So if you're aware of the uh, sensations of the contact of the skin, so that is your uh, body consciousness. And if you're aware of your thoughts, and that is your mind, your consciousness. And we are now going to uh, extend this attention to the front and wish all beings in the front well and happy. When we extend this awareness out, it's still the, also the five aggregate, but uh, in the bigger area. And extend it to the front. They observe any clinging or not, any strain, tension. So that strain and clinging is better. The way to reduce it is also observe impermanence. Come back to ourselves and we wish all beings behind well and happy. Do not let the mind be still or idle, yeah? I mean, quietness, no? I think when the mind being too quiet and not generating right thought, and then it's, uh, we call it delusion, clinging on to this uh, not pleasant experience. And then come back to ourselves. And we wish all beings on the left well and happy. And we come back to ourselves and we wish all beings on the right well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. And we wish our beings behind. Oh, sorry. We wish all beings above well and happy. And we come back to ourselves and we wish all beings below 
well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. So this time around, we feel the entire body from head to toe with loving kindness. And at the same time, when we feel the different sensations, try to wish to be well and happy, and also observe its uh, arising and passing away. Once we are done with the whole body, then we can extend with loving kindness all beings in all directions, above, below, and all across, and all beings in the entire universe be well and happy. However big the area of the mind of this awareness, I try to observe the arising and passing away. Of the formation.
So you try to maintain this boundless uh, loving kindness as long as possible. And the only way to maintain the duration is uh, constantly mindful of this impermanence arising and passing away to uh, generate this thing called uh, wakefulness. and uh, you can move on to a different mode of mind, different state of mind now. There's no need to deliberately expand the mind outward, right? but now we uh, leave the mind relaxed and natural. <clears throat> so the mind is going to be in a scattered mode. There's no need to deliberately fixate in one point or push it in any direction. Just let the mind free flow. And wherever the attention moves around, you just take note. Okay, so this uh, attention can move around through these uh, six sense bases. Eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. So your objective is to observe its uh, arising and passing away of this attention. For every moment you need to ask yourself, where is your attention now? This is the most natural state of mind. If you can uh, 
meditate in this mode, then basically uh, you're pretty okay because most of the time the mind is in this state. By talking, then most probably uh, you are using your ear consciousness. And when you pay attention to hearing, then these are the five aggregates. Yeah? There's the formation, there's form, and there are also the elements. Four elements, you no know, bombarding of eardrums. Doesn't have to be internally, also externally. You know, sometimes you can feel the vibration outside your eardrums. So these uh, four elements is basically uh, how you locate the attention. Attention is being uh, encapsulated by the four elements in point of location of your attention use the four elements yeah, and you have a soft sensation movement by warmth and cold yeah these are the four elements tension has to be there So whichever mode we are practicing, uh, we are actually uh, practicing the Four Noble Truth, yeah? Whether the mind is scattered or restricted, enlarged or whatever, near or far, right? as long as there's no right thought, that means there's clinging with craving and there's uh, tension and suffering. And if we apply the right thoughts, really put in effort to uh, be mindful of right thoughts, and uh, craving is reduced, desire reduced, clinging reduced, and uh, tension and suffering is reduced.
So in meditation, the more you meditate correctly, the more relaxed you should be. If the more stress or more tension, then something's wrong somewhere. You need to troubleshoot. So while being mindful of this uh, arising and passing away, then we can uh, externally or physically conclude the meditation. So we can open our eyes, but mentally we are still practicing this right mindfulness. Whatever activities, you know, moving around, closing, opening our eyes, turning, Right, all these have to be uh, mindful as well. Okay, so uh, a few minutes for any uh, questions and answers any problems or issues. Hey, there's questions from uh, Facebook site. Okay. Should one starts with Samatha or Vipassana meditation first? Ah, okay. So back to uh, uh, basics of uh, meditation. So there is no hard and fast uh, rule to say which one should be uh, started first. But uh, as like a general advice by the uh, Buddha, Pocotavisutta, uh, he's uh, giving an example of trying to burn wood. And so let's say the mind is uh, too scattered, you know, too restless. And uh, if a person really want to uh, you know, do this uh, open awareness, open vipassana, then uh, <clears throat> It's like very hard to burn the wood. It's as though the wood is all been soaked in water. You cannot start the fire. Right? So we encourage uh, uh, the practitioner to calm down the mind first, unify the mind, do some samatha, then uh, and investigate from there. So, and if the mind is too, uh, sort of too quiet, too lethargic, then uh, the would encourage more investigation, more, uh, in, more vipassana. So it uh, depends on situation. And of course, uh, as I mentioned in last year's retreat, uh, there are a few combinations of course you can combine both samatha and vipassana as well. So hopefully that answers the question. Can one meditate without closing the eyes? Ah, yes. Uh, right mindfulness is to be applied in every activity. Standing, walking, sitting, lying down, and all your activities. As long as you're awake, then you can uh, discern this uh, rising and passing away. Okay, yes, Chanin, you have a question. Hi, uh, Yeah. When uh, when we say uh, may the, the body parts or the breath or all the things well and healthy, what should we visualizing? Oh, okay. Uh, there's no need to visualize, but if it happens to visualize, then you just treat it as a bonus, just option of yeah? yeah, because that whatever we visualize is a mind door. And if let's say we are focusing, we're actually trying to... Uh, 
sort of withdraw from the senses. That means we try to uh, not react with uh, the other senses as much as possible. So by having more uh, stimuli from the visualization, you're actually uh, having more distraction. So uh, let's try best not to uh, visualize, but if, let's say we're already you know, spreading in different directions, and you have to imagine you know, some people in front of you or the whole world or the whole universe, whatever it is, then uh, we don't uh, get too sucked up into the image. Because sometimes we might get drifted into you know, mini movies. You know? you might start to drift and uh, have stray thought instead of uh, being focused on your uh, objective. But for example, when we, we say, may the breath be well and, and happy, right? Yeah. Are we just saying that or are we, should we think or something? Yeah, saying that, mentally uh, just reciting, yeah. yeah. It's just to uh, sort of program the mind to be at peace with the breath. It's just like a reminder, that's all. So no need to think about how well the breath is or how well oh, no. the head. Okay. Yeah. And then I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when we when we say, when we are doing the meditation, you say we we uh we are we are mindful of the form meaning the four elements, feeling meaning pleasant and unpleasant. What about perception? You came to perception. I I I do not know how to be mindful of perception. What do we, what, what does that actually specifically mean? Yeah, uh, perception means uh, all the things that you can cognize or recognize. Anything and everything. Can so you if, let's say you, you call, you call this sensation earth element, that is a perception. So it's together. The naming, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. That means even the basic, we discard it, the... When we were when we were being mindful of the uh, the the form the four elements when we come to perception we actually discard this this perception this uh, form uh, the the four elements that we were aware of. It's, it's actually together. It's part of it. The five aggregates is five in one. We're just trying to <laughs> categorize in the five parts. But actually, it's together. So when we feel, let's say, the the heat, no, the heat element. So by calling it heat, that is already perception. And that heat has a feeling, whether you find it nice or not nice. No? So, so it's all together, yeah. Oh, uh, and the, yeah. Then uh, that means we, 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 we are at first aware of the uh, form, the, the four yeah. elements, and then we are aware of the uh, pleasant and unpleasant feeling, and then we discard it. We say, this is perception. You see how it goes? Uh, no, you just stick, stick with one. You can just stick with one if it's uh, too complicated. Then the whole idea is to keep on reminding us of yourself. They are always arising and passing away. Mm. Okay, okay. Thank you. No problem. Yes, uh, turning again, yeah. But I have another question. So yeah. is the arising and falling away process is very fast. Like for example, when I touch my leg, right? is the rising and the falling away of the sensation is the arising sensation is just whenever I touch my leg, I feel mm. that. So it's very fast, is it? Yeah, can be fast. Yeah, depending on how uh, sharp or sensitive your mind is. Yeah, so uh, you know, some people, their mind can be, if they do not uh, reflect or try to uh, recollect this impermanence, then uh, no point in uh, wasting away your this uh, battery. <laughs> but if, let's say your mind is sharp, you're able to see a lot of things uh, coming and going in a very fast manner, then you uh, try not to waste this uh, uh, natural energy. <laughs> now we talk about uh, no, it's uh, converting uh, nat nature's energy, like the wind, solar energy, whatever it is. So all these are natural, those waves, you know, impermanence rising and passing away. Uh, we should know when we, whenever we reflect on impermanence, we're actually converting them into wisdom. Yeah. But the, the process is so fast that it is very hard to observe it, right? Ah, okay. Then uh, uh, whatever you can observe and, uh, and reflect then by all means, but if you really cannot, then you, you scale down a bit. Yeah. 
whatever is uh, most evident, you know, evidential for you. Thank you, Matthew. Hey, no problem. Hey, uh, any other? Oh, yes, Christopher. Yeah, yeah I, 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 let me mute, unmute. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, it's again, uh, again, thank you for the session. It's a wonderful session that you've just conducted. Uh, uh, something crossed my mind about objective reality and subjective reality. So, is there an objective reality? Or a reality is subjective? Objective with reference to what and subjective with reference to what? <laughs> okay, because, because it means that every individual have their own realities. Mm -hmm. So if you talk about uh, ultimate reality, means there's only one ultimate reality, which mm -hmm. is everybody trying to reach that stage called ultimate reality. Yeah. Yeah. So in meditation, we are trying to achieve the ultimate reality because that is the absolute. But our meditation, each of us have their own subjective way of doing things. But yeah, does it right. reach the ultimate reality? Yeah, okay. So uh, well, at least uh, theoretically, the yeah. uh, ultimate reality would be uh, Nibbana. Yes. Yeah, the cessation of all formations. Yes. So the formations will be the very subjective. You know? All these formations are all our karmas, all our perceptions, all our memories. So. All the things you experience right now is uh, very subjective. Yeah. So if subjective, if, if you talk about subjectivity, it means this thing called sensations. How I see and how you see is different. Mm -hmm. Even both of us have eyes. So which means it's, a, it's like a lens. Let's say our eyes are the lens. Mm -hmm. So, it's, so if, our, if we die, the, this uniqueness also die with us. But the tree still exists for other people to see. So, which, which means to say that in our world, the personality of dies with us. Mm. This is how I look at it. So, it ceases to exist. But of course, in the world of others, the realities of others persist. So, it, which, which means that each of us has completely a unique lens. How, like what I said, you see mm. this. I see a car, you see a car. Yeah, mm. but how I interpret the car is subjective. Mm -hmm. So, which, which leads to this thing called solipism. In fact, I look at Buddhism as solipism because sensations, everything is sensation. How I, I touch myself and you touch yourself, different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is how I look. So, it all ultimately, ultimately it reached, we call the ultimate reality. Mm -hmm. Is it right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes, we have to uh, eventually practice cessation of formation. So whenever we uh, practice this uh, right thought, no? uh, reduce greed and hatred, we're actually reducing these uh, formations that produces this subjectivity. So which means there's no truth because all truths are subjective. Yeah, whatever we perceive, yeah, that is uh, quite subjective truth. Ah, this is at least the logical thing. There's no... Yeah. yeah, so the four noble truths are not in a sense, and uh, what would I say? The ultimate reality, the four noble truths are just basically telling you, hey, these are the truth to get out from suffering. It's not the ultimate reality. Yeah, it's their instructions. Yeah. It's like a map when I look mm -hmm. at it. Yeah, it's a map instructions. Yeah, it's instructions. Okay. Uh, so basically, you, you answered the question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, even in the uh, first discourse of the Buddha, the, he mentioned the, the first uh, permutation is to understand it by theory. So he, he understood, no, there, there is suffering. And then the next level is to practice, no, then he needs to uh, experience it. And then the, uh, the third level is to uh, realize it. Yeah? But without theory, so if you say like this, which means we must know the theory first. If we, don't know the, if we do not know the theory, when we start to do it, you are, it's like meditate. I just give you an example of meditation. Mm -hmm. If you do not know the theory, you start to meditate, then what mm -hmm. are you meditating? It's like you are just sitting, yes, I'm meditating, I meditate, but without the theory also called the Dharma penetrating mm -hmm. into your head, you, are, you can be lost because meditation requires the kind of 
theoretical coming okay this is how it works mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah so yeah like what you mentioned is basically you need the map first before you start yes. traveling yeah yeah exactly so the map is the theory yeah okay got it thanks okay, no problem yeah um any other questions yes terence Questions from uh, Brother Leong. For our experienced yogi in the process of meditation, how does one know that one is in the first jhana or not? Ah, okay. <laughs> so, so this one, uh, you need to maybe join uh, my other session, the Monday <laughs> Google session. You have a longer sitting with this uh, session. is a bit short. Right, so if a person want to know whether they achieve these uh, uh, jhanas, they have to follow the instruction according to uh, the uh, breath meditations. And uh, you can check my previous video on the uh, uh, breath and uh, Deepa Sutta. So I think there are three videos in all, yeah? So there are the past year's videos, yeah. Uh, from uh, Lo. I felt my sweat so clearly in droplets flowing down my forehead, but when I touch it, it's not there. Why is this happening in our mind? I appreciate my day advice. Yeah, it's just a perception. <laughs> so this is a first-hand experience of uh, something not real, yeah? But the whole idea is, uh, uh, can you accept it? Yeah? So we keep on need to keep on reflecting and and uh, reconditioning ourselves you know, to understand this uh, perception is uh, you know, it's like a mirage. Ah yes, Jen. Yeah. Yeah, Bante. Uh, good evening, everyone. Okay. I happen to know some people that they say that they have reached the fourth level and above. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, what they told me, right, the majority of them have a high sensitivity towards the unseen. Majority of them, meaning they can see things that uh, they are more sensitive towards those things, right? So uh, my question is, is this normal? And then uh, how is our attitude towards that one? Okay, it's... Uh... <laughs> It's a case by case basis. Uh, so I always like to give example of this uh, venerable uh, Sariputta. Uh, he's the uh, wisest disciple of the Buddha. He can do all the uh, eight jhanas uh, based on the uh, Anupada Sutta. Yeah, the Buddha praised venerable Sariputta for doing all the jhanas and reaching cessation. Um, but however, uh, venerable Sariputta doesn't have the ability you know, to uh, you know, see the, un the unseen beings. Uh, this, you can find this case study in the Junha Sutta. Uh, uh, so you're saying and, yeah. Yeah, some of them do not have that, some yeah. will have that. Yeah, you know? correct. So yeah. uh, how do we do if, let's say, there's something like that happening, this phenomena? Okay, so uh, this one is very uh, subjective. Even a, a non-Jhanic uh, practitioner, you know, a non uh, meditator can also develop this sensitivity. So this one uh, can be uh, <clears throat> uh, can be uh, there are many case studies. You no know, things like maybe uh, animals can be sensitive to you know, natural disasters coming, or even if a person are born in certain realms, if uh, if born in a, as a spirit, you definitely be able to sense spirits. You know? if you are uh, born a deva, you naturally can you know, see the different realms without uh, even. Uh, no, slogging of meditation. So uh, similarly, you know, there are some humans are maybe born natural, maybe they are sort of destined to be like a spirit medium or something. So they are they're already uh, you know, attuned to those kind of stuff uh, since young. You know? So or some people are yeah, being activated halfway, uh, you know, of their age. So there are many causes. You know, some of them can be influenced by external beings, external energies, or external forces that you know, activate this ability. So it doesn't necessarily have to do with uh, uh, practice, yeah. So meaning that it, it does not relate directly to Janic practice? No, it doesn't really. 
Mm. So how does it come about then? Yeah, these are called uh, worldly higher knowledges. Yeah, there are total of these uh, six higher knowledges or the abhinyas. So five of them are worldly. That means they can be developed uh, by anybody or non. Uh, so those uh, yeah. that uh, Janik, the one that you mentioned, the ED, the ED pada, right? I mean the, the ED, the one is actually related to jhana, right? Yeah, Idi Padas uh, may not necessarily relate to jhanas. Idi Padas is a separate uh, practice by itself. Yeah. So, uh, it, like if you, if you attended my meditation course at the Pali Line, I showed the slide this uh, Idi Pada Vibhanga Sutta, the analysis of the four bases of the psychic power. It's more a lot of visualization practices. It's nothing to do with uh, uh, withdrawing from the senses. Yeah. So it is not related to jhana. Yeah, mm. not related. I see. Okay, Bhante. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other questions? Sorry, sorry. I have, I have one yeah. question that uh, came across my mind when you're talking yeah. about this. Mm -hmm. um, this is again i'm not putting in a uh, uh, awkward position it just crossed my mind mm -hmm. so uh there's there's this thing where lord buddha was meditating meditating mm -hmm. that's that's where he then he meditated and he came out from meditation and he says anatta remember anatta he said oh everything is empty so yeah, anatta is uh, non-self <laughs> Okay, okay. non-self, non anatta, anatman or anatta. Okay. okay, then, of course, then I would turn this thing and say, okay, since you said you meditated, meditated and says anatta, so who actually meditated? Isn't that the atta? And say, oh, anatta. It, it, it's a lot, it's, it, it's the, I'm just turning this thing mm. and says, okay, you say that everything is empty, but Mm. Who is the one who says everything is empty? Isn't that the Atta? I, I'm seeing from the perspective. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you, you, okay. Yeah, because this uh, uh, sense of I or this sense of self uh, yeah. is is a last factor to remove. It's actually a kind of uh, emotion. You know, like being selfish, if a person is more greedy and more selfish, you can sense that... Uh, uh, the, the ego or the sense of self is getting, you know, it's more heavier. It's, it's like getting it's more real. Yeah? The sense ah. of I is more real. So if a person were to reduce greed and hatred, it would extend until the sense of I is diminished, or sense of self is diminished. So that is the, the point. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it, it's quite logical. You, I would turn the thing and say, okay, you say anatta, but what's the opposite mm -hmm. anatta? It's the atta. But of course, you okay. say that's the last fractor yeah so which means a very difficult fractor because yeah, correct. the most yeah, so, so most, is the most people will will still feel that i am i yeah? so so this is the oh, hardest yeah. to yeah hardest yeah me is me yeah. yes yeah yeah okay got it thank you yeah okay all right thanks so so the the early days or, or when the, the dharma was uh, sort of the degenerating you know, because we believe uh, the buddhas appear at different interims so uh, you know, before he appeared, you know, the, the yogis at that time believed that this sense of I is the Atta. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So, yes. So they may confuse or equate the, the ego or the, the selfish, the kind of I equals to the, the whatever uh, higher noble concept of uh, the Atta in the past. Yeah. That's why you mentioned the last fretter. Mm. That, that's why it's the most difficult. The extinguishment yeah, that to extinguish the I, me. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, all right. No problem. Uh, any other questions? Okay, the QA is suddenly so long. <laughs> okay, OT really. Okay, so if there's uh, nothing, then we can uh, conclude the session. Right into this uh, <coughs> Anamodana dedicating of merits. Akasata Jabhumata Devanaga Mahitika 
Punyang tangan umuditwa, Sirang rakang tulok asasanam, Etawata jam hehi, Sampadang punya sampadang, Sabe deva, sabe puta, sabe sata anumodantu, sabha sabha visidhya. <coughs> Transference of merits to the departed, idame nyati na hotu, sukita hotu nyata yo, idame nyati na hotu, sukita hotu nyata yo, idame nyati na hotu, Sukita hontu nyata yo. Aspiration. Imina punya kamina. Mame bala samagamo. Satang samagamo hontu. Yawani bana patiya. Sadu, sadu, sadu. All right. So, uh, good night and see you all next week. Any other announcements from parents? Uh, okay, no uh, next week, uh, the session is on, is it? Yes. Uh, uh, I will be taking leave. Okay. Okay, all right. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bante. Okay. No problem. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Bante. Okay.